So, Ambassador, just your thoughts on, on this speech yesterday by the Prime Minister of Israel uh, on Capitol Hill, uh, about an hour long, uh, where he really doubled down on his prosecution of the war in Gaza. It was expected. And uh, as one of my friends here said, it was a victory speech uh, for something that's not a victory yet. Um, and it, no notion that maybe the, the, the government bore some responsibility for the events of October 7th. Uh, but having said that, it, classic Netanyahu, he's probably the greatest orator of the 21st century, uh, to the degree that oratory still counts in the world. Um, and the, the people who like him, uh, it was very impressive. The people who feel less um, amenable toward him, uh, it was uh, less impressive. But one thing you say about Netanyahu, he's one of the few international leaders who's really recognized by a large share of the American public. I don't know how many people in the American public actually know who the, I don't know, the prime minister of, of, of Great Britain is, but a lot of people know Benjamin Netanyahu and has very strong feelings about him. And I think that those strong feelings, one way or the other, uh, were reinforced by this very uh, forceful speech. Yeah, and I mean, he had and he showed, uh, he, he actually showed respect for uh, some of the hostages that were released, uh, that were there with him uh, on, on his speech, as well as some members of the Israeli Defense Forces uh, who were injured and many lost limbs. Uh, some uh, families of those that are still being held by Hamas are more critical of the prime minister. Uh, how does he balance that? It's amazing. He actually included... Um families of the hostages and release hostages in his delegation to Washington who are critical of him. Uh, and I think that's very much to his credit. And at any time that the prime minister of Israel under any government gets in front of the both houses of Congress, it's, it's an extraordinary opportunity to give an Israeli perspective, and particularly on the very controversial and complex events that have transpired since October 7th. That, there's a great value in that. There are basically say, four major sticking points in this deal uh, that's on the table, potentially, uh, to release the hostages. One is the number of hostages and the identity of the hostages to be released. It's only going to be uh, the infirm, the aged uh, women. Then the number of an identity of the Palestinian terrorists who will be released from Israeli jails. And that's a very controversial issue in Israel because these, these terrorists have killed Israelis. You've got to explain to the families of the victims why the person who killed their loved ones is getting out of jail and is going to get a hero's welcome, but their loved ones aren't coming home. Uh, then the question of the length of the ceasefire and the nature of the ceasefire. Israel wants to offer a ceasefire which is limited, about six weeks, um, and with the ability to renew the war. Hamas wants an open-ended ceasefire, which is basically unconditional, and will end the war and include a withdrawal of Israeli troops from the Gaza Strip. And then finally, a major sticking point is the Philadelphia route. That is the, the border between Egypt and Sinai. It was under that route where ha Hamas dug dozens of tunnels and smuggled in all of those weapons and missiles and bullets uh, that have been fired uh, at Israel. Israeli troops now occupy that route. They don't want to give it up. But Bibi doesn't want to give it up, certainly. So these are major sticking points. Um, I think that the, the possibility for a deal is still significant, but there are a lot of bridges to cross. It's significant, but bridges to, to, cost, uh, to cross, bridges to cross. But is there a possibility that with those obstacles that you're bringing up, there could be a ceasefire under Benjamin Netanyahu? Be. It's going to cause. Uh, it's not easy for him politically. I also think it's not easy for him personally. He has to counterbalance the need to return the hostages. Who you know, we just found five more bodies today. We're down to about 111 hostages, of whom we don't know 50, 60 are alive. So if you can get the 50 or 60 back, that is extraordinary. But if Hamas survives and rearms and reoccupies Gaza and launches another October 7th and thousands of Israelis die, you've got to counterbalance the two of them. And it's extremely difficult. You also can't expect easily um, an intra-Arab force or a local Palestinian administration to emerge as long as Hamas is still a military power in the Gaza Strip. So we're thinking about the day after. None of these decisions are, are easy, and Netanyahu is being accused of you know, trying to prolong the war to perpetuate his, his government. Uh, and I can't comment about it. I don't know. But I know that these issues uh, are very, very serious issues, and the Israeli public is divided about them. Ambassador Michael Oren, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. I thank you for your time.